Artificial intelligence is everywhere now, and experts tell us that we're just scratching the surface. And what's really neat is that we're finally seeing AI applications in healthcare. And the one that has everyone talking is ChatGPT. But can ChatGPT replace your doctor? Let's test it out. Artificial intelligence is all around us. It's how Google knows what you're searching for. It's how Siri and Alexa know what you're asking. It's how Netflix knows what movies you want to see, although it usually gets it wrong. And it's how very soon our cars are going to start driving themselves. And AI has found its way into medicine. But how close are we to AI being as good as your doctor? To get your medical license, you need to pass a licensing exam. So let's start by seeing how AI does on that exam. In 2017, China introduced Jiayi, which translates to little doctor. And this cute little AI robot was able to pass the Chinese medical licensing exam. And it was the first computerized system to do that. But that was based mostly on memorization. The system did very well on the factual recall parts of the exam, but not so well on the patient cases because they're more complex. But that was the starting point. And in the last few years, AI systems have gradually gotten smarter. And that's what brings us to ChatGPT. So this was released to the public last November and since then, it's done some pretty mind-boggling stuff. In December of last year, there was a preprint study showing that ChatGPT was able to pass or nearly pass all three parts of the US Medical Licensing Exam, or the USMLE. And they didn't just ask it multiple choice questions, they actually presented the cases and asked the system to lay out its own answers. And even when it got it wrong, the doctors who analyzed those answers thought that the responses were insightful and well-explained. In other words, it looked like the system was actually thinking. So let's test it. In my book, the smartest doctors in the hospital are the internal medicine doctors. So let's see how ChatGPT fares on the Canadian Internal Medicine Royal College exam. Okay, so I found a sample internal medicine exam question. Here it is. You are called by an inexperienced physician practicing in the emergency department. He's admitted a 22-year-old woman with type 1 diabetes and diabetic ketoacidosis. So then they give you the physical exam findings, they give you the investigations, and they ask you to list four general treatment goals of initial treatment. So I'm going to copy and paste this entire question right into ChatGPT over here, and let's see what happens. Okay, and it's done. Okay, that was crazy. Let's look at the correct answers and see how ChatGPT did. So if I go back here, answer one, one mark each question, the optimal answer will include the following four elements. So the first one is correct volume deficit. So let's see what ChatGPT says. And here it is, fluid resuscitation. That's correct volume deficit. So a point for that. The second one, stop ketogenesis using intravenous insulin. Here it is, insulin therapy. Okay, point for that. Replace the potassium deficit, and here it is, electrolytes including potassium. Point for that. And then identify and treat the precipitant, and that is here. Address precipitating factors. So ChatGPT gets all four marks. Basically, ChatGPT just killed a Royal College exam question, like crushed it. And this is a system that doesn't even have specific medical training. It's based on language models which means it's trained to predict the next word in a sentence using a collection of text from the internet. But there actually are AI systems that are designed for medical purposes. The best example is AI for image recognition. For example, a radiologist might see thousands of images over an entire career, but an AI system can be trained on hundreds of thousands of images through what's called deep learning. And eventually, that system can recognize patterns that even the radiologist will miss. And there have been thousands of studies now of systems trained to read things like x-rays and CAT scans and MRIs. And many of those studies show that the AI is just as good and in some cases better than the radiologists. And when you think about the idea of image recognition, there are actually lots of different fields in medicine where that's required. Pathologists, for example, look at slides all day and they're trying to make a diagnosis based on those tiny images. So now we have studies showing that AI can help pathologists to pick up faint traces of cancer that they would have otherwise missed. The other one is dermatology, because diagnosing skin lesions and rashes is also all about pattern recognition. So we now have studies showing that AI can diagnose things like skin cancer, psoriasis, allergic rashes, even nail fungus. And again, AI can make these diagnoses with a level of accuracy that's comparable to the dermatologist. So AI can help us to more quickly or even possibly more accurately 
make certain diagnoses based on images that we already use for those purposes in medicine. But AI can also take that concept to another level. For example, when doctors use their ophthalmoscope to look into your eye, they're looking for things like signs of high pressure in your skull, they're looking for signs of damage to the optic nerve, or things like changes to the tiny blood vessels in the retina of the eye. But it turns out that when you show the same image of what's called the fundus of the eye to a machine learning algorithm that's been trained on hundreds of thousands of those images, it will not only find those things, but it starts to figure out a whole bunch of other things that doctors didn't even know the fundus could tell us. It turns out that AI can actually use these images to predict things like the risk of heart attack and stroke, it can detect Alzheimer's disease and liver disease, it can do weird things like tell you the sex of the person whose eye it's looking at, it can predict their age and their blood pressure, and it can tell you whether they smoke or not. And this is where it gets spooky because the machine is seeing things that doctors can't. So if AI can answer questions on our medical exams, it can read x-rays, it can even see things we can't, is it ready to take the place of us doctors? The reason we're not there yet is that these are all hypothetical situations where the info is kind of presented to the computer on a platter. The reality is that we still need effective ways to collect that information and do the physical exam and then put it all together. The other thing to keep in mind is that even though it seems like the system is reasoning, it's not. A so-called large language model like ChatGPT is just finding patterns in the text. It doesn't know if those patterns are actually meaningful and it can make things up or it can be completely wrong, yet it will often seem believable, which is actually quite dangerous. And if I ask Siri to call mom and it calls Bob, I just hang up and try again. But if AI recommends the wrong test or the wrong treatment, that could actually kill someone. And the problem is that if things do start going wrong, it's very hard to figure out why. The magic of AI is that algorithms learn and improve themselves over time. So even the programmer who originally built them doesn't necessarily understand them anymore. So if I disagree with the AI as a doctor, it's really hard for me to understand why the system reached that conclusion. And we tend to put a lot of faith in technology. So what happens when the computer and the doctor disagree? Who does the patient believe? All that to say that I'm not worried about being replaced by a robot anytime soon. But I am really excited about how this kind of tech might help my patients and actually might help me. For example, I've warned my patients for years now about looking up their symptoms online because Dr. Google is usually wrong. In fact, there have been studies looking at these so-called online symptom checkers and on average, the right diagnosis will only appear in the top three options about half the time. But maybe with new AI tools like ChatGPT, that's about to change. And although it may make mistakes, in some cases, a tool like this might actually be better than nothing. For example, there are people out there who have no access to healthcare at all. So arguably some direction from an AI tool could save a life. And maybe down the road, a tool like this will become a sort of personal virtual health assistant that can sort of answer the day-to-day -day health questions that come up in people's lives. And don't forget that doctors aren't always right either. Studies show that doctors get the diagnosis wrong in 10 to 15% of cases. So maybe a tool like ChatGPT could at least prompt us to think of a diagnosis that we maybe didn't consider. So the future is very exciting and I think ChatGPT is just a glimpse of it. At the end of the day, rather than replacing us, I think AI will make doctors work more efficient. And ironically, that might make medicine more human because it'll give doctors back that time that we no longer get to spend with patients, which is exactly what machines can't do. For more on health and science, subscribe to the feed.